down. All right, coming in hot. <laughs> A lot of action at the car crusher today. Our time on trying to sell parts, but worth our time to fix it and sell it. Problem we have. Workers at the I buy junk car site just uh, fill me in on what happened. Mobile car crusher. I'll walk over there and get a picture of this one. No? The inside of it looks better than the outside. <laughs> <laughs> The guy said he took to have it tuned up, got done something, and wouldn't run. Actually, tuned it up. These things don't look too pretty when they come out. Is Suzu Ombre anyone? They look like that from. 96 to 2000. I'm about to get a one way ticket to, get to the car crusher. Short and sweet. Might be real short. Going for a flat top. Not the door. Ah. I want the good stuff squeezing out of there, I guess. This ombre's a goner. It's a Firebird. Looks innocent enough. Probably a V6. The guy yanking the wheels off. Gotta save that aluminum. Get more money scrap from this guy. Left 15 minutes ago. It was my older brother. So it's about a 20 to 30 minute drive, so he should be here in about 45 minutes. <laughs> well, I don't know nothing about directions. Well, <laughs> some people just mourn that way. I'm kind of like that. We were down in Florida one time. He was sleeping. We were coming back from burning in the beach, and uh, my sister and everybody was following me. And it had me and my little brother. We were coming back. And I looked in my mirror and I see my brother Tommy's head raised up. I looked at Wes and I said, Oh my God. Wesley, I'm very young and I'm your father and everybody. But here's one thing you, you will always need to remember never, ever take directions to Tommy. They got us off the road. We drove for 45 minutes. We seen a sign that way across Georgia, 90, about 96 miles. 45 minutes later, same road, way across Georgia, 91 miles. That might be several. Then he tried that good. We get home this way. We cut to the swamp. Come out to Fargo. This is where he stood. He was 20 miles down that road. We about five miles from Fargo, which is what we tried to find. He turned around and went all the way back. Took an hour and a half to stuff. flipped over. We wouldn't be uh, talking right now. Here it comes. Oh, Grandma's in power. She lived a good life. That big wide tail out there across the back. That was from 2000 to 2005 models. Crush is about to have a good time. Got hydraulics pulled down from the top. 
does push that can pull squeezes from the top down. How you doing? No, I, I, I've talked to Steve before about old car. They got a website, junk, Junkyard Life, and uh, oh. I was going to ask you about the Firebird, if that blue one, I heard the white one gone. But, okay. It's just kind of silver blue on the right side along that Oh, he's got, he got transmitter there, too. Storage lot was full of a few special cars that weren't going to be crushed, like the 78 Firebird, also a 1980 Trans Am Primered, lots of Bondo, Hobnail, Camel seats. I ended up buying that one for about 800 bucks. Chevelle, he wasn't going to crush that. I think he took it home. Corvette, no way, can't crush that. But a few others didn't make it out so lucky, such as the 300 ZX that was wrecked badly. Once they're crushed, they're wrapped up, loaded up on a truck, and uh, hit the scales. He gets a check, and everybody leaves happy. Junkyard Life, the story beneath the rust. <laughs>